TV. Sometimes you just turn on the Apple TV and everything turns on. And then other times yes. Yes. you got to go like hit all the buttons. Yeah. So this time, okay. So this time YouTube did, we are live now and YouTube did want me to confirm. So, okay. which I appreciate. Got the chat going. I need to go mute it as soon as it lets me. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mute. Oop. Cool. Uh, we are rolling. Um, I like to scroll, get the video out of my other screen so that I can see the chat better. Yeah. And not see some weird reflection of myself 10 seconds ago. Uh, welcome to another remix roadmap planning live stream, whatever we call this thing. Um, I'm your host, Brian Florence. <laughs> um, and Brooks is hanging out with me today because, uh, I don't know. I think Michael hasn't adjusted to daylight savings going off or on. Yeah. I don't are we in honestly. daylight savings now or are we out of? I literally, speaking of your like math uh, woes, um, I had so much trouble calculating like daylight saving times. I'm like, it's this hour. So in my mind, it's this hour. I spent like 20 minutes with my wife. And then I figured it out at like 3 a.m. when I had to go to the bathroom. I was like, no, it's this hour. It's this hour. So yeah, I can't make oh fun of you anymore. <laughs> I, I ask chat that kind of stuff now. Um, so what's funny is when I lived on the West Coast, when I was in Seattle, time zones were so easy because I was the like lowest, right? Like everybody else was ahead of me. So super easy to just be like, okay, Utah's one hour ahead. All those other states are two hours ahead. And then the East coast is three hours ahead of me. But now that I'm back in Utah, it's like that math where I can go either direction on the timeline. Just, it destroys me. It's hilarious. But, uh, so what's funny is I gen anyway, never mind. You, you were teasing me earlier about the math thing which comes from that remix single where i'm trying to calculate how many seconds for five minutes or whatever it's so funny because i have most of those memorized but when i was recording that video it just like <laughs> and uh i was so tired of trying to get those videos out that i just i just shipped it whatever it People was gonna make fun of me i thought it was hilarious <laughs> i'm never using remix you see how bad that guy is at math <laughs> valid point um all right. What time is it in Utah now? Uh, in the chat, it is 10 03 AM. So I have finished my workout. I got a, I got a haircut recently cause I'm going to go see my team in person. Uh, we're having a, uh, we call them bursts at Shopify. So when Shopify went all remote, um, along with everybody else, oh man, this is like the anniversary of when everything went to crap. Oh yeah, um, it is. This is the week. This is the week I laid off my team. I'm going to get teary eyed. I got to not talk about this. Um, but anyway, uh, through that fire is how Remix was born. So um, in a very weird twist of fate, probably the best thing that ever happened to my career. But um, yeah, we're now in. I, can't, I, I lost my train. I thought I was saying something about March. We're doing a burst. That's basically what you're That's saying. That's right. We're doing a burst. So <laughs> when everybody went remote, I seriously got so sad there. Like no that's fine it was um yeah we were doing a burst uh man it was so much fun sorry i'm turning this into like a podcast um but it was so much fun when michael and i were traveling around um me meeting it like we met everybody like there's so many people that use remix right now that like we talk to online and stuff and like i've never met them in person where when we were doing workshops every week across the world literally um i i met i met almost everybody who i interacted with online and that's wildly different um, than when like your only interactions are online. Um, I remember once at uh, React Conf in 2018 when I introduced Hooks uh, along with the React team. It was so unfair. They got to show us use state and like that was it. Like, okay, Ryan, you show them all the rest. And so I'm like, okay, here's <laughs> use effect. Here's use ref. Here's use reducer. <laughs> here's all the weird ones. Yeah. Yeah. Here's all the weird ones that everyone's going to hate. Um, <laughs> I, I still love the, the hooks, the way that I learned them to give that talk and the way that I think about them today is exactly the same and I still love them. But uh, anyway, yeah, at that conference, I remember asking who had been to one of our workshops or to a meetup because we would, yeah. uh, when we did a workshop, we'd speak, we'd like reach out to the meetup, give them some free tickets that we're going to raffle off at the meetup and we'd come and speak. And so they were awesome. They'd move their meetup to like the day before our workshop and or whatever. 
and uh and half of the hands went up in that conference that's of awesome. people who'd been to one of our workshops or meetups where we spoke and that was man it was so much fun just meeting everybody so anyway i'm going to react miami so if you're going to be there come find me come say hi um what what are we here for? Roadmap planning. I need Michael here to keep me on track. <laughs> I know, really. I'm doing a terrible job so far. Yeah, you gotta you gotta interrupt me. Roadmap um, planning. Yeah. It's just it's a week, man. This is this is the week. I'm really nostalgic and reminiscent and Makes sense. introspective. Uh okay, so let me let me share my screen. We got we haven't done this for a little while. Um there's so much going on in remix right now, and it's hard to communicate at all. Some of it we don't want to communicate. <laughs> Uh, you know, you always kind of want to like surprise people with some stuff uh, that's really good stuff that, you know, is good. Like and when we'll we'll release that stuff and not say it's stable and get everybody's feedback. But there's some things that you just kind of want to like keep in your back pocket and then be like, hey, it's your birthday. I didn't want you to know that I got you this, but this is what I got you. Right. So it's a lot of that stuff it's that we've been doing. And um, Michael and I have been heads down on it, um, pairing a lot. And uh, so we'll. We'll hopefully have something to show very soon. Um, and uh, yeah, we're also doing a lot of stuff in uh, current Remix too, and React Router and everything else. So um, might have a lot to talk about here today. Um, and uh, let me share the roadmap screen here. I I should figure out what the like perfect pixels are. Yeah. For this to not have to the... Too the gross stuff you know what does it look like on youtube maybe I can it's pretty it good you just have like bars on the side that's all bars on it. so if i make it a little wider now i have to wait 10 that's seconds the 10, 10 second delay yeah yeah it's probably pretty close yeah i'll just i'll just keep messing with it throughout yeah the thing. <laughs> just periodically i haven't even gotten the first update yet Oh, I see it now. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, I got to go quite a bit more than that. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, this is all stuff we merged. We don't really have to talk about this. We never got to talk about this publicly, so I'm gonna just call it out real quick. The root layout. Um, in Remix now, you can export only from. Where is it? I think go to root um, right there on the file conventions oh. and it might be in there. Yeah. Because it's an export from, well, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. export. Okay. Actually, some um, yeah, I guess that's not a file convention. Yeah, that okay. That is that is where it belongs. Um, so something that's always kind of driven me crazy about Remix is that um, when you're uh, when you're error boundary renders the whole the whole like app gets replaced like the thing that you're rendering which, which in remix usually you're you're rendering the whole html document and so browsers do this thing where um when you load the page for the first time whoa i got messier why is it okay um, when you load the page for the first time, it will actually wait for, let's see, let's slow it down. It waits for CSS. So I've got my document here already, but this root CSS file, nothing will render until that's downloaded. See, did you see how it, how it flashed mm -hmm. right before we hit here? And you see this blue line saying, uh, let's just stop. Um, see this, oh no, I cleared it. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right reload yeah so you get that blue line right there yeah. and that blue oh man i really i want to illustrate this better we're doing it one more time so we've got the document and now we're yeah. downloading css and it flashed over there because the css mm -hmm. hadn't downloaded yet so mm -hmm. this blue line is saying hey this is when i very first rendered anything um because uh browsers will block on CSS resources that are mm -hmm. in the head of the document. If they're in the body, I think maybe someone can fact check me here. If they're in the body, then the browser's like, ah, oh, whatever. I, if you put this in the body, it's clearly not important to you. So yeah. I'm not gonna block. But if you put a CSS file in the head, then it will block the render on that. And so it's fine in Remix, you don't get flashes of unstyled content uh, on the initial load with 
CSS and hydrating the root element. Um, and uh, unless you have an error in like your root loader or your root component, and then it'll flip over to the error boundary. And if that's also rendering the HTML, then it's basically like a document dot write, empty this thing out. And then um, now you're like putting in a whole new HTML document. Oh, no one can even see what I'm typing. Um, and and the browser isn't going to like, oh, there's CSS in the head. I'm going to block rendering. Um, instead, it just renders what you told it to. And then it's like, oh, there's some CSS. I'll go fetch that. So you get these flashes of unstyled content because we're replacing that whole document. So <laughs> uh, it wasn't a big deal to us before, like we knew it was there, uh, but we didn't fix it or do anything about it because um, it was an error situation, right? Like your root error boundary rendered, that means the whole app is busted. So you get a little bit of unstyled content on the error page. Um, oh, well. Um, and sometimes you just got to move on with your life and make those trade-offs. But when we ship spa mode, um, we have this new export on here called um, hydrate fallback. Mm -hmm. So this fallback only renders when your app, set, not, not just spa mode, but a uh, client loader too, even with SSR. So we've got this new client loader thing, whether you're in spa mode or SSR mode. And um, you can you can say this client loader um, is, is critical to how this page renders. And so I want it to participate in hydration. So once JavaScript lands, I actually don't want you to render what we, I, I want you to call the client loader and then render. Um, so that's what this hydrate fallback is for, is so that you can give something to the user as fast as possible uh, while Remix goes and calls your client loader and then renders the page. You can also say the client loader is irrelevant to hydration, like you're just using it as a client side cache. And in that case, we don't call the client loader. Um, we just SSR the page as usual and you don't need a hydrate fallback. But yeah. if your client loader participates in hydration, you have a hydrate fallback. So now with client data, this flipping uh, the whole document over to a different component, because we've got three now, right? We've got the error boundary, we've got the normal component, and then we've got the hydrate fallback. And so now every app with the client loader or every spa app, um, you get a hydrate fallback, and then it flips over to the main thing and you'd get that flash of unstyled content all the time. So it became like, a very critical user experience <laughs> issue. So all of that said, <laughs> um, you can now render a, um, we don't have the link up there. Oh uh, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, um, you can now export yep. a layout only from the route. Some people are like, oh, can I do this for any route now? And it it's irrelevant to the other routes. Yeah. It's So now what we have is a stable HTML document. And when we flip between uh, error boundaries and hydrate fallbacks and the main app um, it's just swapping out this children inside of the the main document and what I loved about this feature is that you go look at any remix app and everyone already pretty much has one of these mm -hmm. already <laughs> and so it just kind of like I, I saw one app uh, where I was helping somebody with it and they literally just had to say export function layout and like it all did the exact same thing that's great um, yeah uh, but now we had the better behavior so that's um, cool. so that's what that's about. Um, spa target. This is awesome. We've been talking about, we're going to talk about it some more. Uh, I've got an app where, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Demo notes app. So this is something from the SST folks, um, a little react router app and I migrated it over to remix spa mode. And it's kind of cool. If you come look at the commits, um, you can see we've got theirs, 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 and then I show up here with my branch, and uh, this is kind of cool right here. Just swapped over to the Remix plugin. This is essentially what Spa Mode is. Um, change where the build artifacts go, change the dev build scripts, added the Remix node and React dependencies and dev. Um, <laughs> updated beat too, and then. It simply is a matter of changing your entry points. So now you're going to hydrate root remix style. You're going to have us entry server, even though it's spa mode, we do a little SSG of your root and the hydrate fallback, uh, which is cool because a normal spa without this little 
I don't know, sniff this little little pinch of SSG. Um, uh, you you can't render anything really until JavaScript loads. But this we make yeah. a HTML document with your hydrate fallback. So that's why there's still a server portion. This can be a pain in the neck um, to get that part going for some apps, uh, but worth it. And then uh, and you got your root element. And then these um, Vite config just switched from the uh, React plugin to the Remix plugin. And you say SSR faults. And then just pointed there. This is their infrastructure stuff. So everyone's is going to look different here. But that's it. And this app actually then, like, it was deployable. It worked exactly the way it did before. It's awesome. literally just changing a couple entry points and um, a little bit of infrastructure on what folder to deploy. Um, and then uh, swapping out the React plugin for the Remix plugin. Um, and then you're on Remix, <laughs> uh, which then allowed, so you could deploy that and then you can start to like, uh, oh, sorry, there's a little bit more. And then you got to render the app. <laughs> there's a little bit more just kind of, it's just shuffling around entry stuff. Um, and then uh, from there, um, the commits are really interesting. They had this routes thing. Uh, here's mm -hmm. the home here's route path home and then uh i just added it to the remix routes instead and then you just kind of keep on doing that migrate the login so you remove it from the jsx routes did you just use the route config for like this whole thing as your that makes sense yeah so i didn't have to cool. move like yeah. it was already in containers login i didn't move yeah. it or anything That's cool. um and then, uh, yeah, some, you know, little refactors happen. Um, you move from like all of this React state here. This is this is super interesting. So um, add a client loader, a client action, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. add a fetcher, and then all this stuff comes out of the component, all this oh, state oh, management. Nice. And you get your, right, instead of an is loading state you manage, you just ask the fetcher what its state is. Yes. Instead of doing all this try catch and stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, that's great. You get this. This had error handling, but it didn't have race condition handling and interruptions. Yep. And so not only do you have a little less code here, but you actually have more robust network management. And 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 then you can ship that thing too. Anyway, so I'm gonna make some videos on this and a blog post about it. But um if you uh, at what commit if you like off the top of your head, at what commit do you feel like it's like you start seeing the value of remix? Because there's obviously that little bit of kind of upfront, but is it like is it immediate or is it like no? As soon as we did the the fetcher or whatever, that's when it starts feeling um, like this. Was so I've migrated three of these uh, React router apps um, <laughs> over to Remix Spa mode, and um, the, the shuffling the entries around is annoying, um, yeah. and then authentication is kind mm. of a hurdle too. Um, because in Remix, you need authentication to live at the loader action level. And then in the app, you need a, or, or usually it was like a hook, right? Use auth state and like, and 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 I, I, I kind of started doing this pattern. The React Router docs suggest this even that like, mm. don't, don't redirect to a login page. Like just don't render the routes and render a login screen at whatever URL you're at. Um, so that happens sometimes. So anyway, once you get the auth part worked out after that, then it's, it's super fun. Um, okay. Uh, but, but you start to find that there's kind of duplicate abstractions cause you've got the old code running with the current data mechanisms and you got new code. And so there's some kind of interesting refactors that happen where, okay. um, you take code out of hooks and move them into just plain functions and, and they get simpler. But then you have to like call them inside of the hook, and so there's there's a little it's 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 mixed, right? It's not clear <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. when you're like, oh, this is way better. Yeah, um, okay. Because uh, you kind of got the two paradigms going on. But um, uh, after you've done like a group of features that are all close, the very last one, uh, and and you can see it with the line changes. The very last um, like refactor the settings page. Mm -hmm. This one. At this point, this is when I was able to just delete so many yes. things. I deleted this whole thing. I deleted this whole thing. Um, uh, this hook slib thing now is gone. Oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stuff to make both parts of the app work. And maybe it's a commit before this too. Or, but anyway, 
the further That's along cool. you get, as, as soon as like a, a group of related features are all migrated over, that's when like a ton of code just gets deleted and it's, it's super fun. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, I haven't been watching the chat. The style tag also block initial loading. Um, that's an interesting question. Style tags are part of the HTML. So like the, the question kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Like, because that's, that's HTML. So there's nothing it renders with the rest of your app. So you don't actually get an HTML to block until that style tag has <laughs> come through. Uh, so so I guess yes, but no, because it's not relevant. It's just part of the HTML. Um, is returning null for both client loader and hydrate fallback makes the page almost identical to React Router Spa. Um, so if you just, our default is null in spa mode for a hydrate fallback. So if you don't give us a hydrate fallback, we're just going to render nothing, which is the default for spa mode. Yeah. Um, all right. Single fetch. All right. In current remix, is it possible to migrate from V plus React Router to remix spa and add SSR for a few required pages only? Yeah, that's a great question. Okay, so coming back over to this thing. Um, at any point, once once uh, once I was after this commit, where I could actually render the app uh, with with Remix, which you can see there isn't. I mean, this is huge, but it's <laughs> I moved it from this one, <laughs> and so deleted all that. So again, once you've shuffled all that around and changed your imports, um, you can come to the V config and just say SSR true, or just get rid of that. But you have to ship a server along with it, or else it won't work. So that's that's a big step too. Um, yeah, turn this off and ship a server. And yeah, um, all of your current stuff is just using whatever hooks and data management you had before. And then you can go and make some remix routes with loaders and actions, and those will server render. Um, everything else will just do the hydrate fallback. Um, so yeah, that's part of the that's part of the story is you can incrementally migrate to remix spa mode and then you can incrementally migrate pieces. I think my camera just stopped. Oh man, yeah, you, um, you are frozen. Um you can migrate just pieces over to uh uh server rendering. Um and and, it, and it's not like, oh, you're supposed to move everything up. I'm turning this into a spa mode thing. All right, we're we're gonna make some <laughs> videos and answer all those questions. All right, what do we got? What do we got coming? Uh, I want to see if there's anything else to talk about here. Oh, server bundle. Yeah, server we've bundles, talked yeah. about server bundles. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Vercel now has shipped to that um, stable. Uh, yeah. So we shouldn't have that problem of like remix ship something, but Vercel deployments don't get it yet because um, uh, they needed to mess with the compiler in order to deploy the way that their infrastructure is optimized for, uh, which, which is cool. Yep. Um, so... Yeah, I'm really excited about that. In progress, single fetch. We've talked about this a little bit um, before, right? So I don't know if we need to spend a ton of time here. Um, but single fetch basically allows you to... Um, let's see if I can demonstrate this here on our docs page. If I go to the network and change to dark mode. Yeah. <laughs> So we use cookies to know which mode you want so that we don't have to like do flashes or weird bits of JavaScript and stuff. And um, you can see here that we made a post to change the color scheme. And then uh, we fetched data root, fetched another thing here. Um, this one came from Discache because it didn't change. Uh, I wouldn't expect four. I think we, really we... have four nested routes here. We added something at some point just to like handle a very specific case where like it was just a redirect kind of thing. I need to look at it again because I'm trying Lang to remember what we ref. did. But yeah. Lang ref 24. Anyway. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So after you do a post, uh, Remix looks at the nested routes. And we've got that little visualization here too of, of how this works. We've got all these nested routes, right? So like you've got your root route, you've got your sales route, you've got your invoices route, and you've got your invoice route. Remix after a mutation says, hey, maybe data changed everywhere, right? If you change the value here, you want to change the value here. 
Maybe you have a count up there. Maybe you have a, a total over here. There's a lot of things that might have updated. So we go and fetch, just like it shows right here, every single one of those routes data to revalidate the whole page. Um, and so single fetch says, you know what? We could just do one fetch and get everything you need. Uh, so we'll do the post and then we'll do a fetch afterward for that. Um, I, this will uh, cut down on a lot of network traffic. So your server should get uh, hit a lot less often. Um, you can still do the optimization to say, hey, don't call the root loader, don't call the the parent loader. Like it should revalidate still will, will be respected. So in that single fetch, we'll only go and get the data that you need. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, so every mutation is just going to be two fetches now. There's a post and then there's a get afterwards. Uh, we toyed around with having that post return back the the valid revalidation data so that it was literally a single fetch for um, mutations. Uh, but we decided not to do that because um, there's some there's some uh, cache control use cases that you can't do anymore. Um, and uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a trade off that we made. Uh, we'll we'll talk more about that stuff when it's all shipped. Um, yeah, so this this should cut down on network traffic. Um, also on the and so your server will be getting fewer requests, um, which is good. And then your back end. Um, what's interesting about having a single fetch to go get all that data is uh, number one, it's now modeled the same as our document request. So when you just punch in a URL and you go to um, our docs right here, like if I reload this, this is a quote unquote single fetch for this document. And on the server, we ran all of your loaders in the same request and then sent a whole HTML thing. But then as we navigate around, we're like making individual fetches for just those loaders. So we're, we're making it more like the document request where one request goes and then we run all the loaders and then send you all the data. So um, this actually makes Remix more consistent internally with how it works. Uh, but what this allows you to do is, uh, and this is something that we kind of took away from Hydrogen when they switched to Remix. So I'm <laughs> really excited to give this back to them is uh, they call it sub request caching. Uh, which is uh, another word for a server cache. So if three loaders want to ask for your user and you're using a third-party service and it's got to like go uh, to that service or it's got to go to your database to get that user data, the way Remix works today, we make those three requests. So those are three separate request cycles. Might not even be in the same Lambda, right? Like they could be just like mm -hmm. totally separate mm -hmm. processes. Um, and so you can't share data on a request like that. Um, and so single fetch enables these kinds of backend um, optimizations where you could build an abstraction that maybe uses uh, async local storage or something like that, um, or Redis or whatever. You can just like say, hey, if someone's trying to get the user right now and I ask for the user, let's just share that request with each other and then everybody gets the same thing so single fetch uh will cut down on network traffic to your server um and it will enable you to cut down on uh, database round trips um, and, and other things that you can optimize on the server that it's really not letting you optimize right now um and you can still use oh it, it actually will help make cdn caching with cache control mm -hmm. uh, better too so we're really looking forward to turning that on for our app Fingers crossed that yeah, we really. get a better cash hit ratio. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are those are a lot of the motivations for that. Um, and uh, middleware now, like yeah. uh, instead of three requests all calling the middleware, it's one request. And so that middleware will only get called one time. So it's really just about like cutting down network traffic, allowing you to optimize backend flows um, and uh, optimizing cache control as well. So lots of, whether, whether you're doing a web app without cache control or you're doing a full-blown like super dynamic thing where like uh, you can hardly cache anything, uh, this should uh, th this should be a good trade-off of decreasing loads everywhere. What's, what's really impressive about this, like we, I posted the PR where we 
had the experimental release in our website and like it was quite amazing that it it is just a boolean like i literally turned a boolean on and on i had to replace our entry server because it was like the old one with render to string so that was something that needed to be updated oh yeah but I, I don't understand how like uh matt and pedro or not pedro um uh, jacob were just like this is just a boolean and it all worked uh Dude, yeah our, it's amazing our team blows me away with how good they are at That's these crazy. migration yeah. paths it's always been something important to me we haven't yep. always done it with react router didn't have the time we were just two dudes running around uh, <laughs> on airplanes um and so we'd rather get new ideas out than like make it very smooth but we have such a huge installation base now we're just like we want to make things smooth and help people mm -hmm. make their That's apps cool. modern yeah so the way that our team is developing this stuff just is awesome i love it um all right so that's single fetch uh rsc from loaders and actions this also depends on single fetch um oh 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 single fetch uh single fetch also makes it so we don't need defer anymore yes. i forgot about that so, yes this part is um, actually super cool yeah so over here um defer how you have to say hey defer and we make a promise right here and then we send that promise on through um defer I, I can't remember why we technically needed it maybe we technically didn't need it we just wanted to communicate some things um i think we needed it i don't remember the technical it's details so but anyway um so when you said defer you could only do um promises right here at this level if you had like a nested data structure somewhere and that had more promises um defer didn't work it was only a top level thing which some people will argue is a good thing <laughs> um you don't want to create all these defer waterfalls um but uh hey we're not the cops um we want you to be able to do the things you need to do uh but help you get somewhere fast by default yeah so anyway um with single fetch we're using a new data format um uh, I think Jacob made it called Turbo Stream, uh, very similar yeah. to what a uh, React Render to Pipeable Stream is doing, where you can just pass any old stuff in here, even dates, uh, yes. promises. <laughs> they can be nested, and they all get serialized and then brought back to life on the other side. So you can have nested uh, promises now from your loaders, and you don't need defer at all like this code right here we just don't even need defer here uh you can just return the naked object with promises on it and then do your thing um oh man these docs kill me oh streaming guide okay yeah this one's better <laughs> oh, this one's huge yeah there's never enough time to make the docs great is there unless you like hire a whole team and then they ask me hey how does this work and then it's like i, should, I guess <laughs> i'll just write the docs <laughs> Um, where's the async part the await part yeah this part oh yeah yeah I was staring at it you'll still do this part um, but you could do react use I think too I need to go play with that so um, you can with react canaries and react.use you can you can actually get rid of this await if you want and do mm -hmm. a react use up here on the promise well actually you need to move that down to a yeah well, you still need the suspense yeah but uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, it's it's really cool seeing React get like all up in our business about features that we added to Remix that React didn't have, because um, because now it's in a composable way, right? Like it's it's part of the React flow where with Remix we had to like pull it out and just make it a route thing. Um, React kind of like pushing it into the components is really cool, and we're gonna see more and more uh, Remix APIs just start to like go away, or they're like little wrappers around. Uh, the react stuff so kind of cool so yeah you can now send dates down and they will serialize correctly and come back you can send promises down single fetch is cool um and then after that rsc from loaders and actions um this is cool this gets us into the rsc game for some of the highest uh va highest uh i guess um value use cases of rsc i think which is when your rendering depends on your data and so you'll just be able to return stuff. I think we've talked about this too, but you'll just be able to like render stuff from your loader. And then it'll just come down as part of the loader data, send it on through. You can do use client um, inside of those. 
Uh, we're not doing use server yet, and we're not doing server actions yet with this. This is simply rendering. Uh, but this is really cool because now you can go to a CMS and be like, hey, what content blocks do I have here? And then just render the components that you need. And then those components will just bring in the client components that they need. Where today, every potential render path gets bundled and shipped in Remix. But with this, only the render path that you took and those client components get sent to the browser. So, um, and I think that's one of the like biggest use cases for RSC. Uh, for for an app um well, there's other stuff for rsc for remix that's going to be huge uh i'm going to embarrass myself really quick here if you go to shopify.com <laughs> oh man this is gonna be so embarrassing i think you've done this before so it's okay Have you I? Should be embarrassing yourself yeah okay i should stop embarrassing myself then <laughs> um i think you had a console log are you trying to look at the manifest right manifest. Or, oh, there it is. yep you're right um 44 kilobytes but just kidding it's 5.1 megabytes are manifest and that's because every single route and they translate the routes to like spanish and french and stuff like that on this app and uh but the way that the way that react has worked with server rendering before rsc is all all routing your whole manifest has to go to the browser so you can do client-side routing um and to be able to do like the in-place updates and everything. And you can lazily load stuff too. There's some stuff we're going to do, but um, the thing I'm most excited about is it lets us move the whole route configuration just to the server. And then the only manifest bits um, that you're going to get uh, are the, the things that you rendered. That That's really the coolest thing to me is that you only get the client components. You only get the JavaScript, the browser needs for the stuff you rendered. And that's a, that has huge effects all over the place. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. But this yeah, is cool. this is going to be a very big deal. Uh, gets us in the RSC game. Um, and uh, yeah, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just waiting to see how Remix does RSC before I commit or try it or whatever. Um, this is not our final story on RSC. This is a migration path. So you can keep your current routes, just move some some stuff up into your loader. And then when our full RSC story is done, uh, these components can render in either paradigm in the new routes that just stay on the server or in uh, these routes that are uh, all in the client. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of interesting. You'll be able to migrate either like move a whole route over or move all the components inside of a route into the loader and then move the route over um, instead of just like an all or nothing thing. Um, yeah, so that's coming. Uh, we're really close on that. Both of these, right? Yeah. This one. I mean, single fetch is. Yeah, I think they're like wrapping it up. Should be next week. Do we have? I, we have an experimental release on that. But yes. Just not unstable. Yeah. So. Yes. Yep. So what we do is we ship these experimental releases, um, and you'll you'll see them over here on. Uh, um, I think it's on GitHub. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. GitHub, come over to tags. Four thousand two hundred forty-four tags. That's what happens when you ship nightlies. <laughs> uh, but these experimentals um we will uh kind of, kind of the flow that happens is people get to a point where they're like oh, i'm about ready to make this unstable and put it in the nightlies and so we ship an experimental and then uh and then other people on the team can go and play with it throw it at their apps we throw it at our website sometimes we throw it at uh, other internal stuff at shopify and uh, just kind of see how it goes before we make it on before we put it in the unstable branch so um, and, uh, we usually catch quite a few things and then we make it unstable. So, uh, yeah, single fetch and RSC from loaders are close. This will probably, they're, they're just so close. We're kind of like, should we just do them together? <laughs> uh, or do we need, uh, should we ship them separately? But yeah, I think mm -hmm. we're going to end up going in separate things. Um, remix package. We've talked about that before. Uh, mm -hmm. Just you should be able to import stuff from just Remix. We own that package on npm. There it is. Two twenty thousand weekly downloads. No wonder people think nobody uses Remix. I mm, know. <laughs> gotta pump those numbers uh, up. Cracks me up. Yeah, those are rookie numbers, man. You gotta pump those <laughs> up. Uh, this is that's the package that we used when it was licensed and you paid for it and. Um, uh, anyway, it's the only reason we named it Remix. We had a great re Remix package. Um, 
Michael got it one day years ago, like 2016. And he's like, Ryan, I got this package named Remix. What should we do with it? <laughs> so anyone who says build the app before you buy the domain, no way. Find a good domain and then that will give you inspiration for the app. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, oh, man. Oh, that Remix transportation thing though, man, they own everything. If you go to Twitter, uh, Remix, they've got that. They haven't tweeted since 2019. Oh, 2021. You go oh, to man. GitHub and they've got it. Oh, there they are again. Like, when's their last commit? Partridge. Three months ago. Three months. Dang it. That's totally active. Four months ago. That's a bummer. Jeez. Oh, and then you go to like uh, NPM org. I don't even know how to go to an org. What's the NPM links for orgs? Oh, man, yeah, what is it? Um, Oops. How do you get to an org? Is it like org? Is it like an ad? And anyway, they got this one. To, yeah, see? And they got this mm-hmm. too. It's the same mm-hmm. same people. 13 weekly. I wonder how much you need to pay them. I need to pay them. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be really interesting. D gentleman get get all men. Oh, Dan, Dan, get Dan, 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 if you're watching, I've got money for you. <laughs> oh man, I feel like it's gonna be more costly just trying to change all their packages and everything than even, yeah, it's <laughs> like that's where the real cost is. I wish, oh, man. Um, that'd be awesome. Michael had an app and um, had the Twitter handle and uh built it with somebody else and then he and I were going to use it and build something and then uh, Verizon I think or Motorola Verizon just like one day owned it it had like 2,000 followers on it and then like just suddenly someone from Verizon called up someone at Twitter and was like we need that handle and then uh, and then it was theirs <laughs> jeez <laughs> yikes <laughs> it was a good one too it was a three letter handle it was really good that sucks <laughs> yeah it was dumb jeez um, Okay. I think we've talked about most of these things. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, uh, what's interesting? Fog of War. This uh, this will fix the problem that I just embarrassed myself with with Shopify, where yep. what we're going to do. And we uh, Remix initially shipped like this. I think I've talked about this here, too. You talked about this one on the last one. Yeah. We okay. did talk about Fog of War a good bit. Uh, anyway. Yeah. We're going to we're going to do that. Um, and then another similar thing here. That's split out nice. client loaders and actions. We haven't talked about this, have we? Nope. Okay. So, um, what happens today in Remix in SPA mode and with SSR with uh, client loaders and client actions is the client, like you, you author it all in one module, right? You've got a loader and a component and an action. When it's a server loader in action, our bundler goes, oh, I don't, I don't need that loader and I don't need this action in the browser. Um, I can't talk about Remix without thinking about RSC now, like. This whole thing goes away too. But anyway, um, loader in action, we take those out of the client bundles and just leave them on the server. And then we just send the component. Uh, We added client loaders and client actions and those stay with that bundle. So now we've got this bundle that's got client loader, client action, and component. And what that means is when you navigate to a page and we do our bundle splitting, Remix has to go get that module and then once it has the module, now it can call the loader. So we have to get all the UI code before we can call a loader. Um, and it, I'm I'm bugged that I missed this when we first shipped it. Um, but uh, that's like that's like one of the one of the core things that we created Remix for was I want to call mm-hmm. my loaders. I want to get data before I go and render. I don't want that waterfall dependency. Um, in an SSR situation. Uh, when we navigate, we know the URLs for the bundles and we know the URLs for the data that we're going to fetch. And so we can do both of those at the same time, data and component. But with client loaders, we have to get the bundle and then we can call client loader. So what we're doing Mm -hmm. here is um, more bundler tricks where we're going to pull out the client loaders so that when you navigate to a page, we can be like, okay, I need the module for the client loader and I need the module for the UI. 
but we're not going to wait for this huge UI thing that's got like Ant D or Material <laughs> UI or something in it, right? This huge thing that's five megabytes. We can just go get this little client loader first and then call it as we're waiting for this bundle. Um, so that that's should nice. speed up those, yeah, yeah. That speed up those transitions. This is also a blocker for uh, the admin app, like the main mm. admin app when you log into Spot. Uh, Spot. I did it. I did it like everybody. <laughs> oh man. I don't deserve to work here. <laughs> oh, stream's over. Yeah. I, I just got an email <laughs> we're, that we're I got fired, a, yeah. that I just got fired. <laughs> um I glanced over and I saw my Spotify icon and it just threw me off. Anyway, the Shopify admin app um uses React Router and they're starting to use lo React Router loaders and we're like why don't you just use spa mode? And uh, this is this is one of the problems is uh, those bundles, those those components are big uh, sometimes. And so it just makes the app slower than it needs to be. So we're going to split that out. So between Fog of War, we're going to fix Shopify.com and client loaders and actions. Uh, we're going to provide a path for uh, the admin app um, to be able to switch over to remix spa mode. Um, and uh, yeah, just... Just finding the the little details of our implementation and fixing them. Um, the funny thing about this is the React team's way ahead of us here, and neither one of these are problems uh, with our <laughs> RSC um, secret skunk work stuff that we've got going on. But uh, we're not we're not just going to bail on Remix V two. Uh, you know, if there's if there's something we can speed up or make better, we're going to do that. Uh, even though we know that we have a different future ahead of us. Uh, it's probably a good time to check the chat. Have you seen? Are there any? Um, um, nothing crazy. People, yeah, people want us to get that name. Saying we got to go after D Gentleman. <laughs> and I said his name <laughs> wrong. He's not gonna. He's not gonna give it to us. Honestly, yeah, if, if we could just get the the npm package, because they only have two things there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be worth it. Oh gosh, that would be awesome because then in all of your imports, it's not this remix dash run bull crap. It'd just be remix yeah. slash. It'd be beautiful. And I will I will give them money out of my pocket if I can't convince someone at Shopify with more money than me to do it. Um, uh, someone did ask, is remix going to do ISR incremental static regeneration? No. Okay. <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, that's... I mean, this is a debatable thing, but we still just view that as HTTP cache control with a stale while revalidate rule. Like it's it's literally the same thing. ISR, if it hasn't generated that page yet, I don't know. People are making me talk about ISR again. I'm not gonna talk about it. Don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just stale it. stale while revalidate. HTTP header. Here you go. Web dev has a great article on it. Yep. Thank you, Jeff Posnick. And single yep. fetch will make this even better. Single fetch yes. will make it, uh, yes, it will. our cache hit should be better. Fewer documents. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but the way Remix works today is we, if you have a parent route, I guess I'm going to get into it. You have a parent route and a child route with uh, params. Um, those params are potentially infinite, right? It just depends on how mm -hmm. much data you have. And so this parent route's URL necessarily in today's Remix has that param in it. And so your cache, HTTP cache gets sharded across all of that. Yep. Sharded. Yeah. That wasn't a T, that was a D. It's good. But I mean, it also is kind of like, yeah. like, it's terrible. And if if you do want to see this in like a real use case, like that's how our website works. That's how the yeah. remix docs work. That's And so a yeah. single fetch, we're just going to have one fetch for one URL. And uh, and so we're going to constrain that cache and not uh, shard it across all those. And then, yeah, and still are you validate? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're saying this is, I'm talking about it now. I don't need to talk yeah. about this. Yeah, just go it anyway. look at that. Um, no, I'm not. I'm closing it. Okay. Uh, middleware. I don't know if we're adding this in Remix V2. Might just make you keep on calling the same function. And then with that plus single fetch, you can do like a you can do like a server thing to share the work. Um We'll see uh, with the kind of secret stuff I was telling you about. Uh, we've got middleware and it's awesome. And we're just trying to see if there's a way to author. If, if we can if we can see a very clear path of authoring middleware in the future paradigm with full-blown RSC and authoring middleware in Remix V2, if, if we can make that middleware just, you could 
put it here and then you can just and stick it in this new one thing too i i think we'll do it um that's still up in the air i'm, I'm not sure yet uh we got to finish some stuff first um build rendering did i put this here um yeah this is this is ssg uh, okay that makes sense we already do it right um for the root hydrate fallback Something I've been finding as I've been migrating SPAs over to Remix is we sometimes make the first load worse um, because uh, we go get those first bundles, render it, and then we go get the next bundles and then render that. And so we have this like three-stage waterfall document. We SSG'd that so it at least shows you something cool. And then we have to go get... Um, the the main root app and at that point we know what child routes matched and so now we have this third thing now we got to get the child routes bundles and then we can render everything so we've kind of uh, i've noticed from the spas i've moved over we've actually introduced a waterfall that is irritating the heck out of me and and it's most of the time it's a marginal difference but sometimes it depending on what you got over here or in here it might um, might hurt the performance a lot more than I would like. So probably going to figure out a way to say, all right, here, here are some routes that I want you to pre-generate. Um, and then, uh, and then we would be able to j just like Gatsby and next and everything else. We, we mm -hmm. can dump some HTML files into your public folder uh, for those things so that it's like, oh, I'm at this URL. And then we can preload every single bundle that you need, just like we do when we server render. Mm -hmm. um and honestly there's nothing that really needs to change about remix at this point to do it except we just have to come up with an api of yeah. how do you tell remix which paths you want uh to to render and um yeah. uh i i just haven't sat down and thought about it uh, i haven't even talked to michael about this one either so um but that waterfall is irritating the heck out of me. And if anyone knows yeah. me, they know that I can't sleep at night when Remix has a waterfall that's artificial. <laughs> um, action functions. This is another thing coming out of um, mm -hmm. migrating all of the uh, SBAs over to Remix SPA. Is uh, It always feels kind of funny to move... Um, it's like well maybe i could show it over here yeah i could show it in this app it always feels kind of funny how oh you're asking earlier when do you, when do you really start to see <laughs> the benefits this is one of those commits where like i just wiped out entire components and That's like awesome. all the old abstractions got to just go away um but anyway uh it's kind of so you had you had this code inside of your component before right and you have this um form on submit and you got this handle submit thing and this function just lives in the scope of your component and uh you know, there's there's a case we made of like, oh yeah, we should move it out into a route action, and that's what I did over here. Um, but it it gets kind of difficult because a lot of times there's there's stuff. Oh, and this is this is one of them. This one has this uh, attachment where it's going to S3, um, with a file, and and I've just found a lot of times inside of the scope of your component, you've got props that have come in, you've got hooks that like are are like use S3, React S3, or you have React Stripe. Oh, that was that was actually a really hard one. Um, that one was annoying right here, the settings route. Uh, where is it? What? I don't know. I might not be able to find it. Um, let me just double check. Migrate settings. Oh, it was the billing. It was the whole billing page. Yeah, I refactored it. Yeah, I, I cheated and I just left it in there. <laughs> um, so this billing form here, 
has this use stripe and use elements thing and um you need these for the for the billing form because it talks to stripe and stripe provides these integrations uh to you and so you just say hey handle submit um <laughs> i wouldn't have stripe yet just don't do anything um and then here you have to say card element get elements and then and then you say hey stripe give me a token with this with this card element and this is like oh. an actual like react well it's not a react element but it's wrapped in a react element anyway uh stripe i'm getting into too many details as i usually do the the stripe context above this yeah right here this elements thing this comes from stripe and they say hey give us the stripe promise and then we will put some stuff on context for you which is what uh this thing is using up here this card element now, if anyone renders a card element, it's going to use like an instance of something in Stripe. And then your handle submit can just say, hey, create a token out of this card element. And this elements thing says, get that card element. And this elements thing is coming from a hook, use elements that is on context from the Stripe elements provider. If you try to get a card element, from elements get card element and it wasn't rendered in the same react tree it's not the same card element and stripe is like I, I don't have a card element here i don't even know like i can't make a token for you um so this is one specific example but uh in some other apps that i've migrated to spa mode and trying to move them over to client actions this happens all the time that there's stuff that the current app has in context that it needs and that stuff needs to be in the client action um, the loaders, not so much that stuff doesn't matter. Like you move it up there and all these things work fine, but the actions have been particularly difficult, um, to move around. Um, and so I kind of had to, it was way less code. So maybe that was good, but I kind of had to do some tricks. I had to just put this stuff in the module scope and be like, all right, mm -hmm. I've got a stripe, I've got an elements. And then when you call an action, uh, sorry. And then in my loader, I say, all right, assign the stripe thing. Mm -hmm. and assign the elements thing in my loader. So I'm just kind of like abusing... That's so interesting, yeah. <laughs> ...the remix life cycle of like, I know the yeah. loader's going to get called first, so I'll set some module scope stuff, and then hopefully it's there before the action gets called. If not, I'm going to throw an error. But they had, we just saw the old code also did that too. Like, oh, it's yeah. not there, just do nothing. Um, so this is a little better. You get an error page at least instead of click a button and nothing happens. But... um. Anyway, kind of kind of tricky because I needed um, this elements instance to be the correct one. Mm. Uh, now this is kind of fun. <laughs> I just got rid of React Stripe completely and used their HTML API in oh, a nice. spa, which is funny. So I say, all right, here's your div. Uh, create a card and then mount it, which is all that their React stuff is doing. Yeah, yeah, you're um, just doing it yourself. But this elements thing is just floating out here in the um, module scope. So I'm using the module mm -hmm. scope instead of React context mm -hmm. from the old way. So anyway, um, I personally kind of like this better than the other one. But um, the point remains that there are a lot of cases in spas where your form actions uh, and your submit handlers uh, with fetchers and you submit, they actually are very difficult to move up to a client action um the same problem doesn't quite exist with server actions because server actions all that state is just on your server you've got private keys you instantiate stripe like on your server it doesn't it doesn't have this like i need to be in the render tree kind of stuff um but with spas like that's just where they're at um and th and that's what all the third-party integrations are assuming too right so it's like mm. you might go to stripe had a good one but you can go to other apis and it's like if you can't get access to this in the React render tree, like you can't get access to it. They don't have these like module level APIs to set up their SDKs. So with that huge background, uh, action functions um, are something we were thinking about before. See so right here, like a year and a half ago, Solid Start had this create action thing and I thought it was super mm -hmm. cool. And they just handed that function to a form. And I was like, ooh, hmm. do I want to do that? Um, it would have required AST parsing and bundler tricks. And at the time, we were being super purist about like, oh, no weird bundler stuff. Um, 
RSC has kind of forced our hand and let's say, yeah, yeah, pull, pulled us over the line <laughs> and I'm, I'm good with it. Ooh, do am I getting the, no, you must, oh, yep. Yeah. Still got them enabled. Um, feature nobody wants, uh, cause normally it happens when you don't want it. Like yes. I'm talking about something and then it like gives me a thumbs up and it's like, no, 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 I'm not. No, that's not yes. a thumbs up. This is like, you need to get out of here. You need to leave. <laughs> anyway, messages, yeah. we saw solid start do this and it's super, oh, I'm, I'm over time. Uh, I guess people don't really care. Uh, they can leave they <laughs> um, but didn't want to do the AST stuff. Uh, you service showed up pretty much same, same things. Oh, actually solid start uses use server now. So like react mm -hmm. and solid start are both doing use server for this. Um, and the main difference is use server creates, it just automatically creates an action URL for you. So it's super weird in a remix spa to be like, okay, I need to call a function when I submit this form. So I have to create a route. It's like, well, I'm not, I'm not changing routes. I'm using a yeah. fetcher. Like it, there, this isn't even a server. I'm literally just in the browser trying to call a function and you're making me configure a route and then yeah. call it with a URL. It's just this weird uh, indirection that, um, that inherently exists with a server action, right? A server action has to have a URL and there's a there's a serialization that happens. And so it's not weird for Remix to have not had this for the server actions, but for React Router, it is weird. Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, what we're going to allow you to do is our capital F form will accept an action. Uh, there's details we still got to work out, but it's going to pretty much uh, look just like the uh, the react form action API where you just get a form data in there. And this is cool because now you have access to Stripe elements and you have access to use user and use jot and whatever stuff you have that's only available in the render tree, you can use it here. Um, also any submit handlers, you can just put the action on there instead of a URL. And uh, we're just gonna call that function. Uh, what's cool about this is um, It'll automatically, well, the reason that it's different than React's form action is this will trigger all the pending states on your UI. So uh, you'll get navigation.form data in the case of doing a capital F form. If you're using fetchers, the fetcher will go into all of its pending states. So you have fetcher.stateidle mm -hmm. um, when this action is running. So basically it runs through all of the React or Remix transition and pending uh, state stuff. Uh, and all the race condition handling and the cancellation will be sending you the signals. So if you're doing fetch work, you can give that signal to your fetch and we'll cancel it. Um, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, it's, it's a nice step. It, it removes a step when you're migrating to um, the use server stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you're taking a remix, a react router spa today, and you follow us on this migration path, uh, you don't have to like, do this client action thing and then move it to a react act a mm -hmm. remix action you can actually just be like if everything else is set up you already have a server deployed and you and we already have our rsc stuff out you'll be able to go straight from like i, I did this wrong uh you'll be able to go straight from <laughs> your inline like on submit to then just do a use server thing so you can just go from step one to step four uh on, on that migration path um yeah so it should be should be pretty cool it's cool and then in the future, we'll add the U server stuff and um, you'll be able to pass it into these forms and everything as well. So what's the main difference? You no longer have to configure a URL to get Remix to call your function. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you got questions on that or concerns, please go add it. Um, yeah, and I think that's uh, I think that's it for now. I've nice. been going long enough. Um, on all these things hope everybody is pumped about it um we're working our butts off we're all getting together this week to try to figure out a few more things and just try to make this uh this path as smooth as possible honestly like react router has been a huge part of the react ecosystem the majority of web apps in react are using react router so we're just trying to we're trying to make a, a smooth path to like keep up with react because they're doing some really, really cool stuff. Uh, but we don't want to force you into that either. Like you can get on the path and you can just stay at a spot like react spas aren't 
going anywhere. It's a totally valid way to deploy an app. So uh, we just want to put the things on the menu. Um, and if you'll, if you think you can make a better app or your code can feel nicer, uh, you can adopt those things that we're, that we're adding. Does this do anything? Yeah, it does. Oh, it does. <laughs> Gosh. What about this? Hang loose. Hang loose, man. Nothing there. Nope. It's no the no surfboards or anything. Surfboard, yeah. Bummer. Palm trees. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> uh, let me double check if there's a good question. Just kidding. We'll go way over if there's a good question and I get into it. Fair enough. All right, yeah. everybody. See you later. All right, it has ended on YouTube.